I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6 o'clock. Um, if you will all please stand with me. We have presenting the colors this evening, the color guard from Conroe High School, uh, Army Junior ROTC, Corporal Dearmore, Color Guard Commander Lieutenant Gonzalez, First Private Class Suter, first, Private First Class Dearmore, led by Captain Williams. Uh, Mr. Hubert will lead us in the invocation, and then Mr. Williams will lead us in the pledges. Feel free to join me if you if you wish. Bow your heads, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have to come to this Conroe Independent School District School Board meeting. We are grateful for all those who are in attendance. And we, we ask you to, to be with us this day. We ask you to be with those that have been affected by the recent flooding, both here in Texas and Louisiana, and also those in Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee, and on up the coast. We ask that be with them through this time and protect those who have <clears throat> who may have more more trials coming we ask you to watch over our our children of the school our our students of this of this school year we ask you to be with them throughout this this school year and we ask these things in the name of our savior jesus christ amen, amen. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We should let the kids leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> under the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the United States, one state, under God, one indivisible. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, that is a special treat. We don't always have the junior ROTC with us. I, I really love that they came and did that tonight. Um, item 2A, special district recognition, read for a better life initiative. This is an exciting night for us because it kicks off our Read for a Better Life initiative. This is our 11th year that we've had the initiative in the district. And very simply, we believe reading makes a difference in a child's life. We, we believe uh, when children read, they learn. When they learn, they grow. When they grow, they have opportunities in life. And not only that, they get to open up horizons with imagination and read about incredible things. So we think reading is very, very impactful. And this is a night that we encourage all of our parents and community members to spend 30 minutes a day reading with children, because that truly will change the world. Colin Powell was quoted years ago as saying, what the world needs is more laptops. Not laptops you plug into the wall, but laptops where children sit and parents and grandparents read to them. So we encourage all parents throughout our community to read to students every day. Tonight, we're excited to have the Rice Raccoons from Mrs. Johnson's class here to uh, be our very special guests. And we're going to have them come up, and you're going to introduce yourself. So you're going to come up, and you're going to say your name into the microphone. Then you're going to have a seat in front of the chair. OK? OK, come here and make a line right here. <clears throat> My name is Kaylee. My name is Autumn. My name is Ashani. My name is Ushan. <laughs> here, come right here, face the front so that everybody can see your cute faces. Okay. My name is Brooke. My name is Madison. 
My name is Gabriella. My name is Molly. My name is Elise. My name is Madison. <laughs> My name is Bailey. My name is Kennedy. My name is Calliope. My name is Kaylin. How about a round of applause? <laughs> <coughs> We're really excited to have you. And for those in the audience, we have the pictures up on the big screen, so uh, you too can join along. This book is entitled Duncan the Storybook Dragon. Duncan the Dragon loved to read. When Duncan read a book, the story came to life. <clears throat> and his imagination caught fire. Unfortunately, so did his book. <laughs> I just want to finish a book, said Duncan. I need to know what happens. Do the pirates find treasure? Does the captain save the ship? Do aliens conquer the earth? And I want to read those two wonderful words like the last sip of a chocolate milkshake, the end. Duncan tried everything to keep his cool. Really, truly, everything. I have an idea, said Duncan. I will find a friend to read to me. So Duncan searched a nearby neighborhood. Hello, friend, he said to the raccoon. Oh, I didn't even plan that. <laughs> he said to the raccoon, would you please read me this book? Duncan explored an, an evergreen forest. Hello, friend, he said to a possum. Could you please read me this book? Plunk. Duncan traveled to a faraway farm. Hello, friend, he said to the bull. Will you please read me this book? Uh oh. Yow. <laughs> After searching the entire countryside, Duncan trudged back to his cottage. As he hugged his book, a fat tear trickled down Duncan's cheek. It landed with a plop, dribble-drabbled across the floor, then ran split-splat into a mouse. Sad ending, asked the mouse. I'll never know, said Duncan. As Duncan explained his problem, he noticed a twinkle in the mouse's eye. Do you like books, Duncan asked. I love books, said the mouse. Would you, could you, will you please read me this book? Certainly, said the mouse. So the mouse read to Duncan carefully. Together they battled sea monsters, dodged icebergs, and discovered new lands. They took breaks for roasted hot dogs and toasted marshmallows. <laughs> Finally, the friend sailed home. Then the mouse read those two wonderful words like the last sip of a chocolate milkshake, the end. But actually, <clears throat> it was only the beginning. Did you enjoy that book? You know what's funny? I was reading the book and I looked over the top of the book and you know what I saw when I looked at you? This is what I saw. Because you were, you were so interested in the book and you're thinking about all the things we were reading. And you know what's even funnier? 
I looked at all the adults in the, in the audience, and you know what they were doing? <laughs> because they were so interested in the book. We just want to make sure that you read every day, and I know your parents are going to read to you because they care about you, and they bring you up for this reading, so I know they care about your reading. So every day, we're going to be good readers, and you're going to open up horizons and have all these wonderful options when you get to be adults. Thank you for coming tonight. Does any something's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stockton, we just wanted to thank you so much. I'm not sure how we got so privileged to be in a class with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, that is so sweet. How to go with the I choose thing that you have this year. That is so sweet. We appreciate you choosing us for 32 years. Well, thank you very much. Can we get a picture together? Okay. You stay. How about this? How about this right here? How you doing? Great, thank you. How about one more round of applause? <laughs> sure. All right. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we're real deserving. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much. He doesn't get one. <laughs> there, I Thank you very much. I Thank you. 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 You are free to go home and read. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, parent. Thank, Thank you for bringing, bringing them. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. We're all really, really good. Bye bye. 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 Thank you all for Thank coming. You. All right, item 2B, Special District Recognition, the Woodlands High School Class 6A Lone Star Cup winner, Dr. Stockton. Okay, at this time I'll ask Mr. Colshan, Principal of the Woodlands High School, <laughs> to, to come to the podium and introduce our very special older guests <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That, Dr. Stockton, right. Mrs. Bush, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to be here to recognize the Woodlands High School on what we consider to be uh, one of the more outstanding accomplishments that we've achieved over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes a lot of people for this to happen. Uh, we have an excellent group of coaches, directors, teachers, and sponsors. We've got 4,300 students who all contribute to the effort. And it is truly a school-wide effort that allows this to happen. Um, these guys and ladies who are here with us tonight are more than just coaches. They do more than teach athletic skills um, 
in X's and O's, they also teach character and compassion mm -hmm. in giving back to our community. And we're very proud of the efforts that they do along with every one of the other teachers that we have on our campus. At this time, I'd like to introduce our athletic director and head football coach, Mark Schmid, who will introduce the rest of our coaches. Uh, thank you guys for having us uh, here and recognizing the, the accomplishment that uh, these men and women uh, have been a, a, a big part of at, at the Woodlands High School. Uh, this is our fifth Lone Star Cup championship in the last 10 years and uh, sixth in the last 10. Okay. Loose count. Uh, these uh, coaches take great pride in, uh, in, in, in what they do, uh, their programs and their kids, and uh, I'd like to introduce them to you. Uh, our female athletic coordinator, Dina Graves. Dina, come on up. Come on She's up. our girls' soccer coach as well. <laughs> our boys' basketball coach, Dale Reed. <laughs> girls' basketball, Trista Toch. <laughs> boys' golf coach, Eric Noski. <laughs> girls' golf coach, Chad Hanley. <laughs> our uh, swim and dive coach, Jeremy Wade. Boys soccer coach, Hans Kleinschmidt. Softball coach, Tim Bortz. Our boys track and cross country, Jarris Green. And girls track and cross country, Noel Hansen. And somebody that keeps this whole group together, the glue, our athletic secretary, Patty Lursley. Patty, come on up. Well, uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I think I speak for everybody in just saying how incredibly proud we are of this accomplishment and it, it just amazes me how uh, the, the, the bar of excellence uh, that you achieve. Uh, you know, I've been thinking all day on, on how I could adequately give it justice to what you guys accomplished and this accomplishment, especially being the sixth time uh, at, for the Woodlands High School. And if I could just say one thing that I, 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 I think that I see, I've seen being here for most of my life. Uh, and watching the Woodlands compete and watching the students achieve is that you guys, you know, if you have some tremendous athletes, you're going to win every now and then. But what y'all bring is a culture, an environment, and your focus, it's like Greg says about it's a choice every day, your choice to not just focus on those top tier athletes, but it, it just amazes me of all of the athletes, all of the students, and how you coach them, how you motivate them, how you mentor them. And because I think you, to accomplish something like this, you, it just can't be the superior athletes. It starts for next man up. It starts with all those students and all those players that are pushing those top players. And you guys do just an amazing job at that, year in and year out. And we are so proud of you. Uh, I know the whole community is so proud of you. And uh, again, on behalf of the board, congratulations for this 2017 Lone Star Cup championship. You want to get a group picture first? So you need a group picture? I think we're going to have to get tighter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Congratulations. We know you. Standing ovation is for you. Congratulations. I gotta tell you, I was so excited. I got the shirt. The first opportunity I had to wear it was at the city game. I didn't realize Katie's colors. Oh! For that. Congratulations. That's a shame. It didn't go over too well. I wore it to the tree. Their colors are very Alright, Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, we've had two people sign up. Alright, the next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable re re resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies are, can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Christy Swoboda. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. My name is Christy Swoboda, and I'm an educational paraprofessional at Bosman Intermediate. On behalf of TSTA Conroe and its over 400 members in CISD, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for listening to our concerns about District of Innovation and just asking for an early start date. Thank you for listening to our concerns regarding paraprofessional pay, for the pay increase across the district, and especially the extra 1% for paraprofessionals, and for your consideration tonight for paying the days that we were out for Hurricane Harvey. The Teacher of the Year Committee is grateful for your help in putting on a tremendous salute to all educators in the district each May. Finally, thank you for setting such a great example of what true leadership looks like with the efforts to make sure employees and students were safe before, during, and after Hurricane Harvey. We've heard stories of another district where this was not the case, and you make us shine. As always, you make us proud to be. CISD. Thank you. Stuart Schrader. <coughs> President Bush and members of the board, I'm Stuart Schrader, resident of the village of Cochran's Crossing in the Woodlands. I'm asking for your favorable support of agenda items 6, A, and B. To the best of my knowledge, six homes in Cochran's Crossing were invaded by floodwaters during Hurricane Harvey, and they were all my neighbors, located on West Twinberry Place. For some of these properties, this was the fifth time that they have flooded since Tropical Storm Allison in 2001, and for others, the fourth time. In addition, as you know, hundreds of homes in Montgomery County, located within the boundaries of the Conroe Independent School District, were devastated by horrific flooding. <laughs> Property tax relief is absolutely essential in order for most of these homeowners to begin to recover from this catastrophic event. Thank you for supporting our hurting citizens. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item three is the uh, consent agenda. We have had a request to uh, pull out item G and uh, vote on it separately. <clears throat> got here late, I'd like to speak. 
The deadline to sign up is 530. Be all right, it's up to you. Um, anybody? No objection? I think it's fine. Okay. I have no objections. Thank you. I will certainly get here by 530 next time. My name is Matt Beasley. I uh, now I know why all you guys do this, watching Dr. Stockton read that book to those kids. That's pretty, that's pretty cool stuff in the honor guard. I've started a petition because I don't agree with the transportation policy. Um, I can't receive bus service. And it reali I realized after I've, I've spoken with from this half of the school board, I'm still working on you guys, and hopefully I can get to you. Um, when, when I spoke with uh, Trustee Williams and he said he had no sympathy for the taxpayers that don't get a bus ride for their kids that live within a mile and that we should move outside the mile so we can get bus service so other people can fund that bus service. I, it, it occurred to me that maybe I wasn't really taking in everyone's perspective. I understand that there are people that can walk to school. Um, the policy is to walk, it's not to drive or take a skateboard or ride a bicycle because the school district simply doesn't give us any of those things to do that. <clears throat> so while I was reflecting on all that, I was thinking maybe they don't, they, they don't understand um, what, what, how hard it is, how difficult it is for that one mile. If you know where the HEB is at, at 105 and 336, that's one mile. If you go to the, the courthouse in downtown, that's 1.9 miles from this building right here. That's what my wife has to walk. It's not my son. He has to walk from HEB. My wife has to walk from the courthouse every day. So what I would like for, for everyone to gain to some perspective is for the, net, the board meetings, park at HEB and walk here, or park at the county courthouse and walk here, walk down 105 and cross over I-45 to get here. That's what my family and 1,100 people that have signed the petition, I know it sounds easy. It's not easy. And I, I, I appreciate Mr. Williams' opinion. He's not, he's not riding the fence on this issue. He thinks it's, it's not a good policy, what I'm suggesting. So what I'm asking is that I'm going to present the petition during, um, I think there's a workshop coming up, October 3rd. Is that correct? Uh, For transportation? We tentatively have a workshop. Do you know the date yet? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's tentatively October. It's a Tuesday in October, but. Okay, so that's where I plan to, to present this petition. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening to me. No, it's not on the agenda. As a reminder, we cannot comment as that is not a posted agenda item. But thank you, Mr. Beasley, for your comments. Consent agenda item three, we've had the request to remove uh, letter G. So we're going to pull that out. Are there any other requests to remove anything else? No. All right. So I need a motion for the consent agenda. I move the adoption of the consent agenda uh, sans uh, item G. Okay. I second. second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Or hands. Motion passes. Item G is consider approval of the 2017-2018 estimated annual expenditures by category and authorize Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute contracts with the selected vendors not to exceed the aggregate estimate for each category. Um, Mr. Husbands requested this item to be removed from the consent agenda. So we need a motion to consider this, please. I move we approve as presented. The consent agenda? Or G. Item G. G. Item G specifically. I second the motion. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would just ask that, I, uh, that I'm uh, uh, recusing myself from the vote because my company's listed as a vendor. Correct. So, so. I will abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? All right. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed and abstentions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 4A, consider approval of Read for a Better Life resolution. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Dr. Noll, I'll ask you to come present that resolution. Good evening, President Bush, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. What an exciting night this is for us. Yes. Certainly, when we get to start uh, having children uh, in the room. I, I agree with you, Mr. Williams. I think we should have them lead the pledge every month. <laughs> it gave a new flavor to the pledge. Uh, 
it's an exciting night for us because we know what a special day tomorrow is where we have blocked our calendars and have an opportunity to get into classrooms and, and read to children. And I know that all of us will be doing that and many of you will be as well and, and community members and we'll see um, many students from our high schools traveling down to our elementaries tomorrow and, mm -hmm. and making that a priority and it's a special night. And, and because of that, we would ask for your approval and support of a resolution and I'm gonna read you that resolution at this time. Whereas the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees recognizes that being read to aloud is the single most important activity for children to build knowledge required for their eventual success in reading. And whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that success in reading is the gateway to success in other academic areas. And whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that an individual's ability to read affects all aspects of their lives from the <coughs> development of critical thinking and problem solving skills to gaining knowledge about the world in which we live, thus making them a valued and contributing member of society. It is therefore resolved that the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes every day. And at this time, we would ask for your support for this resolution. So move. Second. All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Knoll. And thank you, Dr. Stockton. <laughs> Item 4B, consider approval of targeted improvement plan for Houston Elementary. Okay, at this time I'll ask uh, Dr. Dr. Debbie Phillips to come up to the podium and present that item. <clears throat> Thank you, President Bush, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, we really appreciate this opportunity to share Sam Houston's targeted improvement plan with you this evening. Um, this plan has been collaborative, collaboratively developed with many perspectives. We had district pers we had district perspectives included. We had Region Six involved, and most importantly, the leaders and teachers in the trenches of Houston put together a plan that we really feel confident about. But before we get started, we're really um, excited that we have new leadership at Houston. Uh, Viviana Harris has a great track record at Anderson, and she is already making an impact. So I'd like to <laughs> And Viviana is here tonight with members of her leadership team and her uh, leadership, uh, her assistant principals. If you'll all stand, those of you from Anderson. <laughs> Thank you. These people have worked tire tirelessly to get us where we are. As a matter of fact, tonight there would have been more people, but there's a math training going on there tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> they are busy, busy, busy. Anyway, so um, as you know, our accountability system is built on four indexes. Index one is all about how many students actually pass the test. Index two is all about how many students make progress from one year to the next. Um, the progress measure is very important because we want to ensure that every child makes or exceeds at least one year's uh, growth each year. So for example, you may have a student one year that makes an 85 on the test. You want to make sure they don't slip down to a 70 the following year. Um, conversely, you may have a student that fails the test the first year with a 30, but next year makes a 40, and that would be um, a good thing because they made more than one year's progress. So index two is all about uh, the progress that a kid makes. Index three is all about, it measures the academic achievement of sub-pops to make sure that we're leaving no student population behind. And so in the case of index three for us, it measures economically disadvantaged, students and then it also looks at the lowest performing racial or ethnic group of the campus and so index three is all about closing those gaps to make sure that all children achieve and then the final index is index four which is about post-secondary readiness and in index four we're looking at the mastery level of students in the star subject areas so example for example, the state believes that if students achieve at high levels of mastery, they'll be ready for college and they'll be ready for the workforce. So the, in order to achieve a MET standard rating, campuses have to meet the performance index target on the following indexes. They need to meet index one or index two, and they also have to meet index three and index four. 
And although there were areas of improvement in specific subpopulations, overall Houston did not meet the performance index targets in one, two, or three. However, they did meet the target for index four, post-secondary readiness. They retain the rating of improvement required, but we have a great plan in place to be sure that they continue to build on the successes that they have. So I um, also want to add that we just got back from Houston's academic conference yesterday, and we were all really impressed by the energy, the positive enthusiasm, and the solid plans they have in place. So these ladies have it going on. Okay, so let's talk about what's ahead. I'm sorry, these are the indexes, I'm sorry. Okay, so we will um, participate in the taste process. Um, well, first off, I want to back up a little bit. This year, we're doing something a little different. Um, we are participating with Region 6 in a pilot to su better support Sam Houston. And so we're going to be doing many of the requirements that all schools in Texas that are in IR uh, will have to go through. But we, there are also a few differences for us because of this pilot. First off, we will still engage in the TAES process, and if you'll recall, TAES stands for the Texas Accountability and Intervention System, and it's just that system that guides the actions of school through a planning process. Last year, Sam Houston went through the process of disaggregating their data, um, uncovering and identifying the root causes of, of the problems, and developing a plan to address those. And this year, Viviana has worked with the teachers to tweak that and to build on it. Um, the other thing that we do is we're going to partner with the Region 6 uh, School Improvement Lead, and our lead this year is Laura Redden, and so she's going to be working with us throughout the year to give us feedback and to also um, uh, provide training to, uh, for Sam Houston all year long. Uh, we also have a designated District Coordinator of School Improvement, and that remains uh, Shelly Winkler. She serves as the person that keeps us on track with the deadlines, the submissions, and she does so much more than that, but we're really glad to have Shelly in our corner there. And then we also have to designate a school improvement professional, and we're very happy to have Delise Lloyd joining us again. Delise worked with us last year, and we think it's really important that we have continuity. We don't want to stop one plan and start a new one. We want to continue on the path that we have built, and so Delise is, is returning. Also, as part of the pilot, we're going to receive some extra professional development from Region 6. And then finally, um, we will be developing, we have developed a targeted improvement plan that we're submitting for your approval tonight. So let's take a look at the plan. Now last year, you may recall that we, uh, the focus at Sam Houston Elementary was all about uh, getting guided reading, writer's workshop and small group math and instruction off the ground and we're really pleased to say that you can walk into any classroom at Sam Houston Elementary at any time and you're going to see those three st structures solidly in place. So we're building on that this year and we're really going to be focusing on building strong teams. Six heads are better than one and so we're really supporting teachers and planning together to be able to do um, a master level of guided reading a writer's workshop and a small group math. So goal number one is that 40% of all eligible students will exceed progress on the 2018 Reading Star Assessment and they set a challenge to themselves. They want kids to make a year and a half worth of progress, at least 40% of their kids to make a year and a half and they're, the, they're pretty determined. And so they're going to do this through planning in their uh, professional learning community time and they're going to sit together and generate quality questions because we know that questions evoke thought and so they're going to be concentrating not just on the structures of guided reading but what kind of questions are we asking. Goal number two, 65 percent of all eligible students will approach grade level standards for the writing assessment. Again, they're taking it to the next level. Last year they learned about, they learned how to sit with a student and confer with a student and help them with that one piece of writing. This year, they're going to take it a step further. They're going to learn how to collect notes from the entire class of their writing, their writing conference notes, sit together with their team, and plan future instruction. So it's that next 2.0 when it comes to writer's workshop. And then finally, goal number three, 40% of all eligible students will exceed progress on the Math Star Assessment. Again, utilizing their professional learning teams, um, their planning time and resources to plan for that first time instruction. So we feel really good about the plan that they have in place. So at this time, I'm um, opening up for any questions or um, if no questions, we're, we're seeking approval of the plan. 
a motion to approve plan as present. The improvement plan is present. Second. We're at 30. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion, any questions? I, I would just like to say that, Sarah, you're a rock star. Yes. Okay, yes. from way back. <laughs> and, and Sam Houston's excited about having you. We're excited about you being there. Mm -hmm. And thank you, each and every one of you, for believing in the success of these children, okay, and working so hard. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Um, approve. Motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? All right. Motion Thank passes. You. Thank you very much, Dr. Phillips. All right. 5A, discuss possible names for Flex School 18. I know we've all been poring over our list of Excel document that we got with all the names that were submitted, so... I'm going to open the floor to y'all now. Um, I'd like to submit Kathy's plan. I didn't hear that. <laughs> Kathy Clark. Kathy Clark. Okay. Did, did I understand it correctly that this first part is just for discussion? discussion. For discussion. Yeah, this is just discussing. So, I'm throwing so, out. so <laughs> you're throwing out <laughs> Clark. <coughs> Any just other? Throwing out that discussion. Um, actually, I was interested in to say. Uh, Annette Gordon Reed, Mr. Husband's recommendation. Now, um, I, I would just tell you that uh, I would I would ask you to think about how many Pulitzer Prize won award winners we have from Conroe, Texas. The lady's been gone from Conroe a while, and I understand that. So she's not as well known as one of my teachers, Mr. Lamp, who I love dearly or Kathy Clark, which we all love dearly, or any of the other great names on there that have been somebody's special person, okay, or a special teacher or a special principal or whatever. But uh, I, do, I do think that she would be a worthy uh, namesake for an institution. I'd like to, uh, I, I have two suggestions. One would be Herbert Lamp, and the other one would be Catherine Clark. Any others? Anybody? Yes, sir. All right. No discussion about these names. We're good with just throwing uh, them out there. No, uh, I, I actually, like I said, I, I concur with with John here on his <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> Dangerous to say that, you know. It's hard to believe. Hard yeah. To say. <laughs> well, I can get that out. <laughs> On record now. I, mean, I was gonna say you, you do know that was recorded, you, you and all of us are. Yeah. I have to say, that. Um, <laughs> you know, all three, all three of the names that were presented yes. tonight are, are are worthy recipients, and I, I can't uh, uh, fault anybody for voting anyway on any of those. So, uh, I mean, voting positively for any one of the three of them. So, um, I just think the the public did a good job. And yes. I think that the openness to the public was a great is a great thing, like we so many times do. And then uh, I think that we've done our homework, and you know some of these people we've known for years and years and years and years. Okay, so uh, what, whatever the outcome is, I rest assured, if it's one of those three, we're going to be happy. Right. Here's the good news: um, we have three schools to name in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> we have school in the Oak Ridge, what's currently the Oak Ridge feeder zone which is the one tonight and, Grand Oaks. and then two that are in the Conroe area in the in the next year or so just to keep that in mind <clears throat> Miss Bush could you read those names off to me one more time please so, so we have uh, Catherine Clark Annette Gordon Reed um, correct yeah. and uh, then um, I'm I'm sorry Herbert I Herbert I, I, I was thinking kicks I couldn't think of Herbert but uh, Herbert kinks uh, kicks lamp those are everybody three. knew Herbert until they read it on his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's... Okay. So those are our three names that we have had thrown out so far. And I know I presented Mrs. Reed's name, and Dr. Stockton has a good point. So let me even go one step further in saying that of the three participants, uh, or the three that have been presented tonight, one of them had an active role in Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. And that was Kathy Clark. I, I, I just got it. I think it'd be above board and, and open to 
to, to say that. I mean, Dr. Dr. Stockton wouldn't step up for his friend like that, but I mean, I just think, I just think that that's, that's, that's a, well, I mean, he, it wouldn't be appropriate well, is what well, I meant. Okay, quit. All right. I'll get this number nine out of my mouth here. Just. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm all right. Any further discussion? All right. Item 5B. Name the flex school. 18. What are we going to name this school? I'd move that we name it Kathy Clark. A second. All right. All those. Any discussion? I think we're good with that. Not full name. Catherine. I, Catherine I would think we would go with yeah. Catherine, Catherine rather than Kathy, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's like, what's, it's, I mean, I think they need to. The yeah, the motion yeah. needs to actually is say be, Catherine. Is Sorry. Initial? Is it going to be? Yeah, Kathy. Catherine. Uh, can we not make the motion in, in name uh, of? And I'm not sure. To make sure it's correct. Is. Yeah, I know it's Catherine Clark. I'm sure there's a middle initial. You know? I don't know what the middle initial is. You happen to know Dr. Sharples? <laughs> I was thinking it was Catherine J. J. Clark. Yeah. Catherine J. Clark. Catherine J. Clark. Then I, I, I that is my motion to approve. <laughs> All right. You we got have a second. second. All right. Johnson. Sure. Let's. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the word that it should be Catherine Johnson Clark. Okay. If that's all right with you, I'm, I'm not a well, member. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So do you amend it? All right. Amend so it? I, I'll re-move that it be Catherine Johnson Clark. I re-second. <laughs> we'll make sure we do this. All right. So we got a motion and a second for Catherine Johnson Clark. All those in favor? Passes unanimously. <laughs> Can, can I do something that's a little bit off of? Are you going to call her? I call her. <laughs> John's been doing stuff off all night. I didn't think you liked her enough. No, I, <laughs> I, um, I, I, I don't know Annette. I've heard wonderful things about her. I do know Kix. He's a wonderful person. So I, there's, I, there's no favor. We would encourage the community to submit those names again when we are naming the next two schools in Conroe. There. <laughs> 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 We're getting voice. You're out of order, Dr. Doug. It's an answering machine. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Maybe she'll answer Dr. Sharples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just texted her. She's already on the line with her. Hi, Kathy. This is Don Stockton. Um, give me a call when you get a chance. Thank you. Send it in red lighter. Thank you for letting me entertain myself. Thanks for All right. Uh, Item 5C, receive capital improvement update. Dr. Stockton. Ms. Foster, please. President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your uh, viewing pleasure tonight the capital improvements update for the projects we have going on throughout the district. I'm going to start with our network operations center. This project is wrapping up. Uh, we'll finish it up over the next, goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, this project is wrapping up over the next few days, or uh, next couple of weeks. So we've, we're done moving the, the data center. We're now recovering the space where our old network was, was housed. So you're just seeing pictures of those uh, spaces being returned to usable office space for district staff uh, in, on now and in the future. For our safety and security project, this is we're working through phase two, uh, already looking ahead into phase three for a future board item. Uh, and this is just a representative picture because we're back above the ceilings now that we're back into schools, uh, wiring, cameras, door contactors, things of that nature to improve the access control and security of our campuses. That project is moving along nicely and is scheduled to run through the end of December. At Grand Oaks High School, where we're scheduled to open in August of 2018, 
that project is on schedule uh, and it is progressing nicely. As you can see from the overhead pictures, we're uh, focused now on securing the exterior of the building, drying the building in, as we said. <coughs> the academic portion, which is what we're looking at from the Grand Parkway now, is closing in on finishes rapidly, so it is starting to become uh, more uh, functional and usable as every day goes on. Uh, we will be seeing colors and finishes in that thing over the next uh, several months as we get the building systems uh, operational and started as we begin moving towards the finishing of that building. On the back side of the building, looking at it from the other side, you see the academics, uh, the back side of the academics, but you're looking at athletics and fine arts and those other venues. Uh, those we're working around the exterior of the building now to close that building in and move forward on those finishes and inside of that building as we speak. And now, finally, from the Woodson Reserve side, we're seeing the, the connection to, to uh, Waterman Cove. That project, project is underway now, so I can say now that if we're going to build it, it's under construction on that site. And like I said, it is on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2018. The next project is Flex 18, now that it's Catherine Johnson Clark, Clark. Intermediate School, uh, is actually progressing very nicely as well. It is scheduled to open in August of 2018 alongside of Grand Oaks High School. You can see from this overhead picture the building structure and slab is in progress along with the site development of the paving and other areas. Since the overhead picture has been taken, the, the structure has moved along very rapidly. So right now we're looking at a perspective of the front door of the now Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate School. Uh, so it, it is progressing and like I said is on schedule to open in August of 2018. At Connor High School, we're doing an addition to the building to facilitate a major renovation of the building air conditioning systems and other uh, operational systems in that building. The uh, building addition itself is moving along very well. We've been able to pretty well isolate ourselves from student traffic, so we've got lots of help from our police department and uh, other staff to, to make sure we facilitate the transfer of students between buildings safely so that our construction workers can move along and uh, they are moving along very well. You can see from the detailed pictures, they're working on underground plumbing and other things associated with that building, as well as working on the underground and foundations for the central plant, which is the new uh, air conditioning, the heartbeat of the new air conditioning system that will serve Connor High School for the renovations of the new building addition and long into the future as we revitalize that campus. That, that project, I'm happy to, is on schedule as well, and we'll be on that campus until December of 2019 working on it. And that is our update. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, item 6A, discuss possible reappraisal of property damage. Madam President, I have a motion. Um, item 6A and 6B, I'd like to motion we remove those from the agenda. I believe that those two items are outside the scope of authority for this particular board. They're more so appropriate for a state authority and not, not this board to make those decisions. So I, I motion that we have those two items moved from the agenda. I second that. All right. Any discussion? Can we have some discussion about that? I mean, how and why and you know, a little bit more information before I vote on that, if you don't mind. Well, as I mentioned, yeah, just, the, these, go these the items are more so items right. for the state to make this determination. There's nothing really for us to do here. I mean, until we get guidance from the state as to how they want to address these items, it's, 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 it's just not, it's not within our authority. It would be equivalent to us making other authorities at a state level, at, at a local level that are state, within the state's jurisdiction. Is that true? I think it's the best school. I think in, in the interest of our school district, it's best to gather more information before we... Like okay, then um, I would submit that we do item B and table that for now and continue to have this discussion since we well, have. We have a motion on the floor. We have a motion well, in a second. Vote on the motion in a second. But can I present arguments as to why I would suggest that we vote against this motion? Yeah, that, that, that would be sure. what I'm doing in this discussion. Come here. Um, we have two of our local tax authorities here with Montgomery County Central Appraisal District and with the tax assessor collector. Having heard from the state comptroller myself, he stated that it was up to the local taxing entities whether or not we reappraise. Is there a question? I mean, and uh, so I'm 
I'm asking if that is what the state I'd like us to entertain a motion to end discussion and move directly to vote. Second. All right. All those in favor and ending discussion. Opposed. Motion on whether or not to uh, please repeat. I'm sorry. To motion to remove items remove A and B items. from the agenda. All those in yeah. favor. Opposed. All right. Item 6C, consider award of RFP 17-01-01A, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consulting so Services. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice, this is a, a monthly item now, so can we present that, please? Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight, we are recommending that the Board of Trustees award RFP 17-01-01A, Contracted Educational Services, Professional Development, and Educational Consulting Services, Services, September 2017, for the 17 vendors listed on the attached tabulation for an estimated annual expenditure of approximately $10,000. As Dr. Stockton said, this is the monthly edition of this RFP. The district has requested proposals from 331 vendors, and thus far, we've received 105 vendors since June of 2017. This proposal will remain open until May 31st, 2018 for proposals to be submitted. Service contracts with awarded vendors will remain firm through September 30th, 2018 with an option to renew annually for four additional one-year terms through September 30th, 2022. At this time, I request your approval. So moved. Second. All, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes. Item 60, receive financial reports. Trace. All right, this evening I'm here to present the financial statements for the month of August. Uh, these statements will include our general fund, higher debt service, our child nutrition, our self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Each month we like to take a look at our cash and investments. We'll concentrate here once again on our general fund. In the general fund, we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $3.5 million. We have investments in our pools of $85.6 million. Our short-term investments, less than a year, $29.8 million. In our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, we have $51.5 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $170.3 million. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. It includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. They include local sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local revenues, we can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in the general fund and debt service. It's food sales and child nutrition, and it's premium contributions in our self-funded insurance. Our projected fund balance in the general fund, uh, no change here. We're projecting about a $9.5 million increase to our fund balance. Debt service, no change to our projection here. We're looking at an increase of about $4.5 million. Uh, same in child nutrition, no, no change, $692,000 increase. And although these statements are, of, are of, as of August 31st, these will be audited, so there, there is going to be some changes to those, so they're relatively close. Um, this is our 2015 bond referendum status update for the month of August. We've currently expended and encumbered $301.6 million. We have an estimate, an additional amount to complete of $213.3 million, giving us a complete project forecast of $514.8 million. That will leave us with contingency right now of about $5.4 million. Uh, for our grand total of $520.2 million. And once again, if you look at the Grand Oaks High School, that $2 million has been moved out of that project. Self-funded insurance, good news for the plan for the year. Our year ended for the plan August 31st. Um, we had total revenues in the plan of $45 million. Our expenses of $41.6 million. For the year, we had revenues over expenses of roughly $3.4 million. So, so great results of the plan. Uh, 
you know, just so we know, our run out on the plan is roughly four and a half to five million dollars. So we still have that three month runoff that we'll have at the plan C today. But great shape. We don't have to come back to the board in a few months and ask y'all for, for help for the plan. Uh, participation in our wellness centers. We had 5,100 patients visit our wellness centers and we averaged about 425 a month. Our investments for the month. Our value of, of our total portfolio of $324.3 million. Our pools were yielding about 1.21%. Our short term investments, about 1.33%. Our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, 1.25%. So our total combined portfolio had a weighted average maturity of 92 days, yielding 1.22%. And our benchmark, the 90 day T bill, is 98 basis points. So thank you. Thank you. Legal um, section, section 7A, submit nominations for the 2018-2019 Montgomery County Central Appraisal, Appraisal District Board of Directors. Um, do we have any nominations? Madam President, I'd like to nominate Barry D. Blanton. Mr. Blanton is with Blanton Advisors, LLC. Uh, he also has a degree in finance. Uh, and spent many years in the banking business and is well known in Walker or in Montgomery County. Uh, I saw he was in Light the Night Walk, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> also in Montgomery County uh, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. He's been a big uh, contributor to our county and I think he would make an excellent board member. I would echo that. You can't find many more people more outstanding than Barry Blanton and his leadership and um, everything about him as far as his character and he's from a, a long line of that and legacy of that so I echo. And he went to Conroe High School too. <laughs> he did. <laughs> not with anybody else. Not with anybody else. Not, not with anybody up here. No. <laughs> and the bias going on. He's older than I am. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's been spoken to and he would be very interested in being a board member. Awesome. Um, the current board. What else do we have? How many more people do we need to there, there are five that sit on the board, correct me if yes. I'm wrong, and I have all five expressed interest in continuing. My understanding is a few of them have decided they would like to roll off. That's my understanding, too. Okay. So who wants to stay? It's, it's, <laughs> it's like secondhand. They're, they're, well, well, they're, they're, I, they're I, heard from, I heard from one in particular today that called. Um, Bruce Tuff did call me and asked to, to stay on the board. Stay on. Yeah, he's currently on. He asked to stay on. So we got two. Um, well, you can nominate as many as you want. Yeah, yeah, we can nominate. Just, and, it's, and then the, we're going to vote yeah. next one. We'll vote. Yeah. Yeah. Is, Is anybody nominating on one at a time, or are we going to uh, nominate a slate? Because I'll nominate Bruce if, if we do it together. You know, as far as it's just whoever you want to nominate, we're just going to send the list on. So it's it's not a yeah. vote. It's just a nomination, not vote. Just a, yeah. well, I'll, nominate, I'll nominate Bruce right. then. Okay. In, in addition to Barry. So. Do we have? I mean, today's just nominations. Is it? Yeah. When we get our vote, is it, is it too late to add at the time? Yes. 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 We have to yes. have. We have to nominate. Uh, uh, I would have to ask, and I don't want to put somebody on the spot. So we can put them on there, and they. <laughs> They, they take them off afterwards. Oh, no, we just don't vote for them. We just wouldn't vote for them, yeah. We did that last year. Oh, a guy that I had re I had requested, uh, and he actually accepted, then decided not to. And so when he, we came time to vote okay. last year, we just didn't vote I for him. I have one recommendation. A gentleman named Boner Luzi, B-O-N-A-R, last name L-U-Z-E-Y. I think he's a third. And I'll get you guys his bio. I'll email you guys his bio afterwards. Okay. You can give that to me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm Mr. Blanton's as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a, I'm a soul copy. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are any others? I'm, if not, the three is perfectly acceptable. All right. Um, we don't need to vote on these, no. so we're good. I don't don't think they need. To vote. Uh, you pass a resolution, no. and I will right. you, to approve resolution nominating these three. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought there was a resolution to nominate these three. So I need a motion listing these three. Um, motion to resolution or motion. Motion to adopt the resolution. Motion to adopt the resolution to nominate uh, Mr. Blanton, Mr. Tuff, Bruce Tuff, and Mr. Bonar Luzzi. Um, for the Montgomery County Central Appraisal District Board of Directors, please. I second. All right. 
All those in favor? Opposed? And I am going to abstain due to a business relationship with Mr. Blanton. All right. Well, I will disclose, I mean, I maybe uh, was a, my treasurer when I ran the first time, although I didn't, mm. never did. Never, I never, he didn't do anything. I didn't have an opponent, so it really wasn't. Uh, I'm glad you disclosed that. I, 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 I changed it. Everything. Appreciate that. He's out. <laughs> All right. Um, the next section is actually going to be an executive session, so I think we're we going take to take a five-minute break. Take a five-minute recess. Thank you all. To have Mr. Helm fired, the board can overturn the hearing officer's decision, or the board can grant any other relief it feels it's appropriate. Is there a motion? Madam President, I make a motion that we uphold the decision of the hearing officer and deny any relief to Mr. Finnegan. I second the motion. All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. The hearing is now concluded. Motion adjourned. Um, well, we have, we're going we to executive session. session. Oh, we're going to move to executive Sorry. session. Yes.